You're back again. Look at that. What a coincidence. So am I. Who could have called this? Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 most bizarre coincidences that prove that we live in a simulation. Number 10, Comet Neowise. Summer 2020, remember that one? When everything was closed and the world was panicking? That was a good time. For a few days there, we were all distracted by something in the night sky, something beautiful. Do you remember this? It was Comet Neowise. Did you see it? If so, I'm extremely jealous. I woke up at 5 a.m. to catch a glimpse of Neowise and I couldn't see anything. I walked home with binoculars in my hand at 6 a.m. like a weirdo. What's going on there? Well, as beautiful as this phenomenon was, many considered this comet a bad omen, believe it or not. Until the 16th century, comets were usually considered bad omens, perhaps the death of kings or coming catastrophes. Now, considering Comet Neowise was discovered March 27th, 2020, some can connect it to the catastrophe that was the pandemic. A few months late of a warning, but thanks for the heads up, I guess. Comet Neo not so wise, rather, I don't know. Number nine, deadly date. My sleeves are so long, it's getting longer. For many, the 4th of July is a celebration, right? It's a hoot and or holler. Even up here in Canada, we hear all the commotion and it sounds way more fun than Canada Day, you know what I mean? Fireworks, hot dogs, grown men sitting in the back of their pickup trucks arguing about sports, it's beautiful, it's a vibe. But did you know July 4th, historically, is one of the deadliest dates out there? Three out of the first five presidents of the United States all died on the same day. July 4th. And if that's not crazy enough for you, two of them passed on the same day within hours of each other. That's right, both John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on July 4th, 1826. The same day. Five years later, July 4th, James Monroe also passed away. That's pretty spooky. That's a very specific Final Destination movie right there that needs to be made. Number eight, Lincoln and Booth. Since we're on the topics of American presidents, I'll bring in one of the craziest coincidences in history. Now, it's common knowledge at this point, or at least I hope so, to understand the demise of President Lincoln. He was, you know, taken out, if I can say that, he was taken out at the opera by one John Wilkes Booth back in 1864. Now, before this happened, and I mean months earlier, Abraham Lincoln's son fell off a train platform. And who reached down to save him? Why, it was Edwin Booth, the son of John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, he was like, hey, whew, close one, right? See you in a bit. Number seven, balloon fate. In 2001, a young girl in Stratfordshire, England, took a balloon and wrote, please return to Laura Buxton. The note even had her address on it. And then she let this balloon and the note go. The winds just took it elsewhere, all right? Now this balloon, again, with her address and all of her information, ended up traveling 140 miles and ended up in Wiltshire where a farmer found it. Now it turns out his neighbor had a daughter named Laura Buxton. So confused, he brought this balloon to that Buxton family and that Laura wrote to balloon Laura's address, which again was written on the note that they just gave away to the general public. She wrote back explaining how her family ended up with the balloon and after the parents arranged a meeting, the Laura's discovered that apart from their names being identical, they were both 10 years old, both had a pet black lab, both had a rabbit, and both had a guinea pig. They also both told their story on a podcast in 2009, in case you don't believe me. Now look, as fascinating as this is, coincidence-wise, do I think it's a good idea to write your 10-year-old daughter's address on a balloon and then let it go? No, that's, that's really not a great idea at all. That's a horrible, horrible gamble. Do not try that one at home. Hey, this is where I live. Number six, Mark Twain and the Comet. Oh, you thought we were done with cosmic coincidences. Well, think again, pal. American author Mark Twain, he loved a satire, right? Loved novels or two. But apparently he could also predict the future. Yeah, who knew? Mark Twain was born in 1835, the same year Halley's Comet just happened to pass by. The next time Halley's Comet reappeared was in 1910. And this also happened to be the same year that Mark Twain Died. Even more unbelievable here, a year before he died in 1909, Mark Twain said something that we can't get out of our heads. It kind of hints towards his death almost. He said, quote, the Almighty has said, no doubt, now here are these two unaccountable freaks. They came in together and they must go out together, end quote. Could Mark have been referring to himself and the comet? If so, he kind of nailed it. Number five, a twin thing. Identical twins Helen May Cook and Clara May Mitchell couldn't have been closer growing up. The twin sisters were born February 2nd, 1932, and from their childhood and throughout their entire lives, they were best friends. At age 83, Clara sadly died of a heart attack, and then only hours later, Helen, 
also passed away. See, Helen had been battling Alzheimer's for quite some time, so at any moment she could have succumbed to her illness. But the fact that it happened only hours later of her sisters, it almost feels like when Debbie Reynolds passed away a day after Carrie Fisher. That was a terrible, terrible week. That was back in 2016, believe it or not. Feels like it was only the last year. Crazy, time's going way too fast. Number four, Roberto Clemente. Your parents may know about this one, pretty famous. This one's a little old as far as sports history goes. The Pittsburgh Pirates had a right fielder in 1972, Roberto Clemente. He was actually the first Latin American player to reach 3,000 hits. He was the 11th in the entire major league. Not an easy feat to get to at all. Now this hit was supposed to be the best moment of his life, not his last hit ever. Yeah, the Hall of Famer was unfortunately killed shortly after the game in a plane crash right off the coast of Puerto Rico. Roberto was on his way to a humanitarian trip to Nicaragua. Now it's sad, but it's also pretty beautiful that he got 3,000 hits. It was almost like he was meant to hit that last pitch before his untimely and horrible demise. Number three. The Wreck of the Titan, or Futility. I hate when book titles have like the end part that doesn't have to be there. Like just call it The Wreck of the Titan. God damn it. Author Robert Morgan wrote The Wreck of the Titan, or Futility, in 1898. Now keep in mind, this was 14 years before the Titanic sank in real life. Now there's a handful of similarities here in the novel and in the real life tragic event. I mean, for starters, the ship's names? Come on, the fictional Titan and the very real Titanic? It's a bit odd. Both ships were initially described as unsinkable. Both didn't happen. and both both hit icebergs on the starboard side of the ship, and both were 400 miles off Newfoundland when they sank, which of course just happens to be on an April night. A lot of coincidences there, it's pretty spooky. Now the main disaster here for both of these tales, again one being fictional, one not, was a lack of lifeboats on board. Yeah, that always rubbed me the wrong way. The 20 lifeboats on the Titanic could only have saved 1,178 people. That's around one third of the number traveling on board. Doesn't make any sense at all, what a bright idea. Bound to fail. Number two. Dennis's The Menaces. Do we remember Dennis the Menace? I remember a movie growing up, but the cartoon, that was a long time before me. So maybe your parents read some Dennis issues, I don't know. Dennis the Menace hit the pages in March 1951, alongside his famous furry sidekick, Ruff. But somehow, some way, the same month, that same year, the UK launched their very own version of Dennis the Menace, and there are no signs of plagiarism. Just. An odd coincidence, I guess. The characters were made independently, so now there's two menaces out there, which is just terrible. That's like an Avengers level threat. We gotta watch these two guys over here. I feel like the UK version's way more badass, you know what I mean? Like he goes and causes real problems in pubs. The UK version is always better than the American. The Office, Dennis the Menace, chocolate? Oh, definitely chocolate. For sure chocolate. Now I wanna book a flight. And finally, number one, the Comet family. Ooh, this one is so good. The odds of being killed by a meteor are one in two million, right? But even so, back in 1954, residents in Talladega County, Alabama, noticed a ball of fire heading towards them. Now, back then, we didn't have Twitter or anything. We couldn't warn people that a meteor was gonna hit. We didn't know how big it was, what was going on. It was terrifying. And we also didn't really know how to tell if meteors were coming or not, so it was alarming. It was especially alarming for Anne Elizabeth Hodges, who got hit by that space rock. Yeah, she only got grazed, thankfully, but with these odds, turns out it's still possible. Now, cut to even more recent history. The Comet family over in France, their house was hit by a meteor. Yeah, the Comet family family was hit by a space rock. That's a little, it's kind of funny, that's ironic for sure. Their last name hinted them towards their impending doom. Now somebody with their last name McWaters, I'll admit I'm starting to sweat a bit. I don't want to drown now. That definitely sounds like I'm going to drown. Those are the top 10 bizarre coincidences that prove that we live in a simulation. I'm Taylor McWaters, you're you, and we'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.